That veto came down last week and the governor said that veto was needed because there was programming on OETA that disqualifies it from public funding. It's in some of the stuff that's that they're that they're showing it just overly sexualizes our kids. There's parents defend child transition on PBS that's being played. Um, there's elevating LGBTQIA2S plus voices. That was the governor on Friday claiming OETA was indoctrinating children. He vetoed HB 2820, which would have allowed the state's PBS station to operate through 2026. If you want to watch that, that's fine. But why am I using taxpayer dollars to uh, to prop that up? I don't think we need that. And um, Glad, glad to veto that bill. This is not the first time PBS and their member stations have come under fire. Back in 2017, President Trump proposed cutting PBS funding. And in neighboring Arkansas in 2020, lawmakers threatened to cut funding for their PBS station after the show Clifford featured a gay couple. We all know that many, many things are politicized in our country today that maybe 10, 15 years ago were not that way. Um, and once again, I suppose we could always politicize just about anything. According to Bob Spinks, a former board member for Friends of OETA, the group that helps fundraise for the station, about a third of the station's funding comes from the state. And without that funding, OETA would essentially cease operations. That's because the station's license is held by the state. It, it's not simply we'll go out and raise that money from other sources. That license will go away. And House Speaker Charles McCall did acknowledge that because the House passed this bill, they do support funding OETA, but wouldn't say if they're ready to override the governor's veto. However, Democrats, including State Rep Monroe Nichols, has called for lawmakers to override that veto. If no action is taken, OETA will have to cease operations by this time next year.